From as basic as how to level up your sync pairs to more advanced tactics like how to build a proper team, this video got you covered. If you are a veteran player, I don't know why you're here but thanks for a view I guess. I would assume most of you are new to the channel so let me do a quick self-introduction. My name is Kai, or you can call me Kylux, and I've been playing Pokemon Masters EX since the first day of Global Launch which was over 2 years ago. And on this channel, I make all sorts of Pokemon Masters content such as reaction videos, free to play guides, some showcase videos and some questionable challenges that make me rage sometimes. If you are interested in any of that then feel free to subscribe. There are also timestamps in the video description so you can just skip ahead if you want to. Let's start off by asking what is a sync pair. A sync pair is basically a trainer and a Pokemon pairing up to like form a team. So basically, a Pokemon and a trainer is a sync pair, right? So to access a sync pair, very simple, just click the sync pairs uh, button. And then you can literally go to any of this really, like just go maybe like lucky skills or maybe you can just go to sync grid. And then all you have to do is just hold, tap and hold any sync pair you want. Then you can view their stats, their Pokemon, everything, right? So each sync pair has different stars. There's 3 stars, 4 stars, and 5 stars. There is also 1 star, but 1 star is for X, right? And you can also go to your polyphone here, the bottom right corner. And you can click on text, and then you can literally like scroll through like every single sync pair and see which sync pairs you have and which sync pairs you don't have. And then you can also like favorite the top left corner, you can favorite it. And then it will say that this sync pair will appear more often in the Pokemon Center. So if you really like this sync pair, then you can, you know, favorite it and then it will appear very often. Also, a thing you can do is you can tap on trainer, you can literally spin them, you can hear their voices, you can like look at the animations and all that, which is pretty cool. You can do the same thing for Pokemon as well, right? You can like do animation, the sound, anything, everything, right? So that's cool. So there are three roles in this game, right? There's striker, tech, and support. So Kalem here is attack, right? And then support, Lyra, Lyra is a support. Then we have Huda, which is a striker. And then for striker, there's two types of striker. Huda is a physical striker. If you play the main games, you probably already know what is physical, right? So physical meaning like you physically contact them or something like that. Then we also have a special striker. For example, Alder, he's a special striker. So he uses special attack moves. Then each sync pair has a weakness, only one weakness. In this game, it works a bit differently. Every Pokemon only has one weakness, there is no resistances, there is no immunity. Only one weakness, which means you can hit ground type with electric moves, you can hit dark type with psychic moves. So there is no resistances, there is no immunities. Only one weakness for each sync pair. Now each sync pair has four moves, right? We have like the regular attacking moves. We also have this, which are called trainer moves, which is, which are in like bluish color, right? Trainer moves usually have a limit on how many times you can use them. Like for example, Cynthia, show me your secrets. This move only has one use, and then we also have Ghost Wish, which is two uses. And then once you finish it, you can't use that move. You can use that move anyway, unless you regain it from some other way, which we will talk about it more later. And at the middle here, we have the sync move okay each sync move has a level one to five you unlock when you unlock a character it is one out of five and then as you get more duplicates it increases in level right we will talk a bit more under the move level section but basically the more you get the higher level and it comes out at level five there is also this thing called a sync grid which we will talk about in the sync grid section we the higher the level the more access the more expanded your sync grid will be it probably sound a bit confusing but we will go through that later and then the sync move also usually has like a depends on the sync pair. Usually tech has like a description saying that this move increases when you have what you have what right. For Cynthia's case, the move's power is increased when the zone is cool zone. The, you don't have to worry what is cool zone yet. We'll talk about that later as well. Then for example, we have Faulkner and Luxray. Their description says that this move's power increases when target is paralyzed, right? So usually tech has this different saying and then striker usually has nothing it just says no additional effect support usually as well now we also have passive skills right so there are not every single player has three passive you some only has one or two which is a bit sad but that's just how this game works i guess passive passive is activates itself right so let's say speeding santo increases the gauge when it's sunny on a roll 
you increase the chance of additional effects or moves, right? There's also this thing called the Master Passive, which only specific sync pairs, like only a, a few sync pairs has this. So let's go... Let's go with Lily, Lulan, Lunala, right? Master Passive is this one, the purple one. It's a special passive that only, only Master Sync pairs have. So let's say Lily has it, uh, Cynthia Giratina also has it, Harchi, Maxi also has it. So Master Passive is interesting, right? So you can just read the description, I guess. So basically, so basically the more, let's for example, for Lily's case, Alola Flag Bearer, it basically means that the more Alola Sync pairs you have on your team, the higher damage you do, and the less damage you take. Now there is also this thing called the lucky skill. It's it's basically like an extra passive skill, and it also requires you a different way to unlock it, which we'll talk about it later. Regular passive, your regular moves, they unlock automatically the moment you get the sync pair. Lucky skill, you have to get it. You, you have to get it yourself. Then the last thing is the team skill. The team skill, like each character has their own set of team skill. And for now, Lily, we have Ghost type, we have Ghost, Alola, in our outfit, Big Tails, and Alola Adventurer. Basically, this means that if you pair Lily with another Alola character, you will overlap the team skill. Right? You overlap the team skill and then you gain some stat boost. We'll talk about that more later under the team skill section. Now, let's talk about how to level up your sync pairs. To access the like level up menu, you just go sync pair, level up. Very simple. So level up, you use different skills, so I have later have an example save up for you guys to see. So you can literally just level up them, just use like, there's four different type of books. The, so the one with the diamond ring has the most EXP, obviously, right? All you need to do is just, you know, spam them and then level up them. And then to farm them, you can get it from... Click explore and then you go to a training area and then you level up. Just like... These stages, you just speed them to get the item. The higher stage, of course you want to aim the higher stage because you get more item but usually I don't really recommend you to just farm them there because you can just get them from events. Right? The books are actually quite easy to get. A lot of events have them. You just like go to events, you can like exchange them. I think I already exchanged them here, right? So no, the, usually I will focus more on the level cap. Let's for example, let's just upgrade Lana, okay? You just upgrade her, upgrade her to the max 100. Which is not the max actually, not the max. Oh, that is not the max. You can increase the level cap further. So to unlock your level cap, you just click unlock level cap. And then you just unlock it. Right, it's uh Alana is already level 100, you just unlock them. Very easy. Right? Then unlock unlocking them you need like this item thing. Right, you can this item thing. You also have Gene Leader notes, lead four notes, right? Okay, let's say we we'll just upgrade them. And then once you get to like uh, 125, you get this water tome. Thing. Because Stana is a water type, you need a water tome to further progress the level cap. So to farm your level cap, to farm your level cap, you just go training area and then you just click the first one. Then the first one, the second one also is also quite important. The first one, and then you just look at the bottom here, and then you know, right? You just know like 125, 130, 125, 130, 135. You just farm them basically. And then cap along area is where you get the the tome, right? The tome, each, there's the type for, that's, there's one type of tome for every single type in the game, so there's 18 tomes, right? So you just have to farm them. Here, right? 120, 130. So you just keep upgrading them until the max, which is 140. But I'm not sure if I have enough or not. Okay, so 130. Right, so the higher you upgrade, the like, more different thing you get, right? Like, the different, there's more different items you're required to use. Seems like I don't have, seems like I don't have, seems like I don't have enough to get to 140, but yeah, something like that. And I do, I do, I mean, I do think that this tome thing codex, the silver lining is codex. Just not the bronze one is tome. Is the limiting usually the limiting factor to unlocking your level cap to max. For each role, so like strike attack and support, there's like different. This thing, right? This thing, I don't know what you call that, but this thing, you can see like the logo is striker, right? Then let's say you go for Ramos, it will have like a tech icon. So you do have to form like three different like support strike tech, which is kind of maybe a bit annoying, but again, same thing as the level, level up book thing. You can 
fun. You can exchange them during events as well. So you don't have to focus 100% on the uh, on the training area. Now we're gonna talk about how to evolve your Pokemon. So evolving Pokemon, you would require shards. You need shards to level your Pokemon. So to get the shards, you just have to go to the evolution material area. Then let's go the first one. And it should be easy to unlock because it's only level 35, but yeah. So you just have to click ready and then you just farm them. Alright, it doesn't cost any stamina. Which this game has a stamina system which we'll talk about it later. So you get the evolution item. And then the way you evolve them is through Sync Pair Story. Right? The Sync Pair Story. Which is this. Not every Pokemon can evolve, right? Because some Pokemon obviously already evolve. There's also some Pokemon like Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff cannot evolve in this game. Jigglypuff and Lyra specifically. So evolving Pokemon we have like this icon thing, right? This this icon thing which can evolve. Then you just have to do your mission here. Right? That's all, very easy. Then when you do the mission, it costs your it will use up some of your shards, evolution shards. Now let's talk more about team skills. So team skills, you can go to Sync Fair, team skill, you can upgrade each individual team skill, right? Each of them you can upgrade up to level 4. And then the way it works is that if, let's say you build a team, for example, let's say the Kanto Trio. The Kanto Trio has three overlapping team skills. Kanto Trio meaning uh, leaf, blue and red, it's just what the community likes to call them. So it has Kanto, Signal Suit and Pallet Town. So it has three overlapping team skills, which means they get like some stat boost basically. So the more skill you overlap, the more stat boost you get. And then usually the thing that you want to focus more would be the typing because the typing actually gives you the highest number, the highest boost, right? Like for example, like water type. And then oh yeah, also each support tech and striker, each of the team skills increase different stats. So let's say okay, Ilio, Ilio increases HP. He's a support. Okay, he's a support here. So as you can see, water increases HP by 60, the other ones increase by 30, and then 15, right? So the typing usually has the highest stat increase. So usually you want to build a team, you want to have at least, you know, like two same types just to get some of the boost, right? And then to upgrade them, it's very simple, just click the, like for example, SR, just upgrade them. Very simple. You can upgrade up to level 4. And then to upgrade them, you need this type sphere thing, skill, skill sphere thing. To get them, it's also easy. You can just go to explore, training area, and then you go to team skill area, and then you just farm them. You can also exchange this in events as well. Now I'm going to talk about the different type of sync pair scouts. There's quite a number of scouts in this game. The first one is the spotlight scout, which I don't think it's run. I don't think any is running right now. Yeah, unfortunately there's none that's running right now, so basically Spotlight Scout is... I would say it's the weakest scout in my opinion, because it has the lowest chance of getting a 5 star, and then the sync pair that is featured on that banner is usually included in the general pool after the banner ends, right? Like for example, Sonia and Yemper are the latest Spotlight Scout, which just ended like a few days ago, and they will be in the general scout in a general pool after once the next banner starts, right? Like, for example, right now, the next banner is Lucas and Dialga. Well, at least at the time of recording this video, right? Then the next one we have is the Seasonal Scout, which is this one, Faulkner and Lactivire, and then there's also Sabrina and Jingling. They are, they are sadly, they have the same 5-star rate, which is 7%, 5-star. And 2%, they have 2% chance of pulling for the featured one. Which is also the same as Spotlight, but the different thing is that seasonals are limited. So once the banner ends, they won't be in the general pool and they will not come back for maybe like another year or a few more months or something. So it's difficult to get them. Now the next thing is the tier scout. So the tier scout is similar to the seasonal scout, basically like the signature feature is the same, but you use paid gems to get them. Right, so it's I think it costs like 180 or something to get like all the tier. There's 10 tiers, but there's only five showing here right now. And then at tier five, you get this great ticket scout, which is 25 chance to pull the featured sing pair, which is Sabrina and Chingling. 
and then at tier 10 which is not shown here there's a guaranteed chance to pull them so if you plan to so if you plan to scout using the tier scout once you get a ticket you just go to ticket scout and then you can just use a ticket there like for example this one this one is the guaranteed one at tier 10 100% chance to get them and then this one is the not guaranteed 25 chance to get them so it does i think cost like 180 dollars to get to tier 10 but then you guarantee to get them but it's expensive if you have if you have a lot of money to spare then sure why not i guess so there is also like a seasonal double thing right so sometimes there's like two or three sync pairs featured on a single banner and they usually have like different rates as well so it's 1.5 1.5 usually if it's only one then it's two percent right and usually reruns have them right like for example uh new year lily and lens they were released last year so they rerun so they reran this year and then they gave them double banner so they are featured they are both featured in a single banner now the next banner i want to talk about is the pokefair banner which is not here pokefair banner is slightly better it's 10 percent chance to get five star also 2% chance to get a featured sync pair so it's pretty much the same but then you have higher chance to get 5 star and the pokemon sync pair are also limited but personally i like it more than seasonal because you have a higher chance of getting 5 star as 10% chance seasonal is only 7% so yeah the next one i want to talk about is the master pair scout which is the most valuable one i think in my opinion because it has 12% chance to get 5 star which is really high Right, 12% chance to get a 5 star. But the downside is that you only have 1% chance to get a featured sync pair. Usually it's 2, but in Master Sync Pair Scout it's only 1. Which is kind of sad, right? But if you are free to play, I recommend you to just usually just focus on Master Sync Pair Scout. The Master Fair banner because it's very valuable and very rare to get. And then if you haven't realized it yet, there's like multiple buttons here, right? So there's a sync pair scout which is to use 300 non-paid gems to get one there is sync pair scout times 11 which is 3000 gems for 11 which is always the one you want to go for right because you know it's like 3000 gems you get one extra right because it's usually 10 sync pair right but then you get 11 and then daily discount is this one is using paid gems so 100 gems paid one you get one per day some of them have has like three of them right and this one you can use it three times, so it's 300 gems per day, but you get three sync pairs. Also, one thing I want to mention is that there is this scout points thing, right, on the top right here. There's like points, 400 points. So every time you get sync pairs, like for example, you use this once, right, the single pool, okay, you get three scout points. And then if you use the sync pair times 11, you get 33 scout points because it's 11 times 3, right, because 11 sync pairs. But then the daily discount is only one. The more you pull for a single banner, the higher your scout points will increase. So let's say you pull this like 10 times, you get to like 330 scout points. And then when you hit 400 points, you can get a free sync pair, right? It's called a pity pull. Meaning you can pick any single sync pair you want. That's in the banner, right? In the banner, of course. So of course, in Cynthia's banner, you cannot pull for Faulkner because he's limited and then he's not you know he's not in the pool so that is cool so if you are free to play i recommend you to save up to 36,600 gems which is just enough to pity pool so you will get them 100 percent guaranteed now i'm going to talk about the ticket scout you can get free five stars from this ticket scout thing so there's like a ticket scout for each eight regions so there's eight of them and then there's, there's one like general one like this one this one is the general one and you need 30 tickets to pull for them each of them using like their own respective tickets right they don't overlap right so there's like Kalos ticket Kalos ticket Sino ticket then to get the tickets you have to go to expo you have to battle the daily region rotation right make sure to do this every single day because you get tickets from them then you also get like better points which we'll talk about that more later you can also get the tickets from events as well you can exchange for them and then once you like have once you have like 30 tickets you can go to shop let's go and then you can just scout for them very easy and then it's free five star right it's nice to have now the next thing i want to talk about is re-rolling 
So if you have played gacha games before, then you you probably already know what is a reroll. But if you have not, then a reroll is basically when you delete your account. Like you just started playing, you delete your account, and then you restart your account to attempt to pull for better sync pairs. So to delete your account, if you plan to reroll, of course, you go to account and then you just then you just click on delete save data. Obviously, I won't do that because I will lose my I will lose my progress, right? Of course, I won't do that. So once you do that, you can just restart and then just con just reroll. If you are a new player, there's like this Kento Trio banner, which is a really good banner, right? You only have three days to pull for them, and then I recommend you to reroll for them and just keep pulling on the banners and get at least one of them, right? Signal suit red, signal suit, signal suit red, signal suit leaf, and signal suit blue, which are really really good swing pairs, right? <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly talk about them, right? So. Signal Sleeve can poison, can debuff defense with defense, can heal, can tank. Overall, good sync pair. Really, really good sync pair. Do one of the best supports in the game. He can buff defense, he can tank, he can move gauge acceleration. He has like a lot of passive that can buff attack and special attack for your team as well. Then he has safety net, which is a really useful passive. You can endure when you use the sync for the first time. Sync also red. Overall, overall a really good damage leader. He can buff crit and special attack himself. He can max out his own crit and special attack. He does a lot of damage. And yeah, really, really good sync pairs. Really recommend you get at least one copy of each of them to get like a good head start of the game to like, you know, like blast through the easy content and then get to the later in game stuff, right? And then now I'm gonna show you guys this list thing. It's a reroll tier list. I will put the link in the description so you can check it out. So it might get outdated after a while, right? But then I will try my best to update the description every month. Because, you know, every month we get some new sync pairs, right? So you can just look at this, right? These are the limited ones. And yeah, Signal Suit Red is here. Signal Suit Leaf and Blue are here. So make sure, I recommend you to get at least one of them. And they are high priority. This list is made by some people in on the Pokemon Master Discord. You can join the Discord. I will put a link in the description as well. Then here are the non-limited ones, right? So you should focus like on the top here, right? And then if you think there's like you have a good amount of sync pairs from, from the top here as well as like one red, one leaf, one blue, right? At least one of them, then you are good to go. You can stop rerolling and then just start playing the game. That is assuming you literally just started playing the game like a few hours ago and then you watch this video, right? Now I want to talk about the bingo missions. So this is very useful, especially if you want to reroll because you get like 6,000 gems here, right? Like the beginner and the intermediate one. You get three gems, so you can literally use this to reroll. And then I don't really need to explain how to how bingo works, right? You just get like eight bingos all together, and then you just get like rewards. And then if you get all eight bingos, you get the bingo blackout, which is like the grand prize. There's also like this Professor Oak and Mew, and then the Rosa Six Star X thing. I recommend doing that as well because they are free, right? Do them. Make sure you do them. Now you might be wondering like where can I get more gems, right? So gems are definitely like the main resource in this game, like the more valuable resource. So you can get them through login bonus. You can also get them through like the sync pair stories, right? You get 10 gems each for completing them. There is also the daily mission and the regular mission. Just go to this. Let's do your daily mission and then you get 80 gems per day, right? And you also have the event missions which give you a lot of gems actually, right? Do them, make sure you complete them, you get free gems. You also get gems by like completing the stages for the first time, like first time rewards. That's really how you get gems. We do get about like 20,000, 17 to 20,000 gems per month. So it takes like 2 months plus to get to PT Pool, which is, is 36,600 gems. Then for paid gems, you have to go to purchase gems. That is assuming like you wanna spend money on the game, right? For the paid gems, make sure you be careful, right? Like you make sure you calculate correctly. Because some of the values, because like the values, they vary, right? Like the best gems is the one with one dollar for three hundred gems, which is not here because I already bought them. So the one dollar for three hundred gems is the best value your money can buy in this game. And the next best value your money can buy is the fourteen thousand gems for eighty dollars. That is also a really good value. This one is about like one seventy five gems per dollar, which is quite high. The regular ones are like 120 something, which is not that good. So if you do like plan like spend maybe $80 per month, then you can go for this one. It's a pretty good deal. Then you can just use the gems for daily discount, right? It's only 100 gems, 100 paid gems per day. 
uh, you have like six five balance or something so that's that's like 500 600 paid gems per day of course that is up to you you don't plan to buy any gems then you don't have to right this game is actually quite free to play so don't worry about that you will get it you will like eventually beat like all the end game stuff you do need to play like probably six months though i'm gonna teach you guys the best ways to use your gems so you can use the gems to buy stamina on the top right corner which is the worst way you can use gems don't do this right do not do this for the gems one stamina may seem like good value but no 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 don't have to don't just don't do that you can also use your paid gems to buy like this egg stuff right you can right if you're uh, like if you if, if you like to collect eggs then go ahead but i personally don't really care about the eggs right we will talk about eggs in the egg section later then the other way like the the really the other way you use the gems is through the scout scouting the same pair right so like i said just now the best way i mean not exactly best but like the recommended way to use the gems is to get 36,600 gems and then get a guaranteed pt pool right so you have a guaranteed chance to get the same pair you want if for example you want Vogner and the if you have 36,600 gems you can get him 100% guaranteed there's a pro and con in this way to spend gems right so the pro is that you get a guaranteed sync pair right the feature sync pair that you want you get him or her 100 but the con is that you will be missing out on other banners right so let's say you have 36,600 gems you can maybe spend like 12,000 gems on this banner 12,000 on this banner 12,000 gems on this banner and you might have a chance to get like one copy of each right you get Faulkner you get Cynthia then maybe you get like Lens right maybe you get that but then there's also a chance of you not getting any single pair if you like split up your, your gems like 12,000, 12,000, 12,000. So this is really a risk you take. But for me personally, I recommend you to just save up 36,600 gems and then get the guaranteed single pair. So you will not have any regrets and you won't like cry over your gems or something. And then I also recommend to just focus on master single pairs because like I said previously, they have 12% chance to get 5 star. And then they only have 1% chance of getting Master Sync Pair. So if you are 36,600 gems, then you have a guaranteed chance of getting them. And you can also do the daily discount, like I said before. 100 gems per day. Sometimes uh, 100, some banners have like 3, three tries. Like 3 limits. So you can pull it 3 times, 300 paid gems. Of course, paid gems is really up to you if you want to spend money on the game. I'm going to talk about the skip tickets and the stamina system. You get 1 stamina every 4 minutes and you get 360 stamina per day. And then every day you also have like a free 200 stamina from daily right here. So that's 500, 600 stamina per day. And then you also have a player rank right. So player rank is like this thing. So it levels, it, so it levels up like the more stamina you use right. So and then when you rank up to get back some of the stamina then now the skip tickets so the way the skip tickets work is that you have to beat the stage at least once without anyone dying then you can use the skip ticket to skip stages and just get the rewards instantly without battling them and then the skip ticket is very easy to get you just get it from like daily missions basically right here in daily missions you get them you can also get them from login, you get it from exchanging and you're gonna go, you're gonna be overflown with like the skip tickets. I have like almost 5,000 skip tickets. You will have a lot after playing for a while because this game gives you way too much skip tickets. Now I'm gonna talk about exchanging the items in the shop, right? Ex exchanging items. So you have like the events one which you should prioritize first, right? because it's the items are pretty good right sometimes you get like this scout tickets which is good you sometimes you sometimes get like candy coins which i already exchanged candy coins are really 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 good we will talk about that in the move the move candy section and then the next one we have the bp section which we will talk about later right the bp section and monthly the monthly one there's a limit for each of the monthly one it refreshes every first of each month right and there's also you can exchange like this berry stuff which I will talk about later in under the X section. Then there is the general stuff. You can exchange like for gears, you can exchange the candy, you can exchange for candies, which is very very valuable. The more candy thing. It's very very valuable resource, which we'll talk later. 
And yeah, you can exchange like for money using the pro as well. And then if you are a returning player that, you know, maybe you played like in 2000, 2020, the early 2020 and then you took like one year break. You can exchange like all this stuff at the like bottom, the, the very very end of the general one. Like this capsule thing, they are obsolete now. And then this trading machine thing, they are also obsolete. You don't need them anymore, so you can exchange all of them for like all these items. You may have the question of why do I keep getting duplicate sync pairs? Why do I keep getting sync pairs that I already have? It's very frustrating, stuff like that. Like, well, this is a gacha game, first of all. You can do anything about it. But it's not the worst thing to get duplicate sync pairs. Depends, it really depends on who you get. If it's a good sync pair, great. So you can increase your move level up to level 5. And then there's a couple ways you can there's a couple ways you can increase it. The first way is getting duplicate sync pairs from the scouts. The other way is using candies to increase your move level. And then increasing your move level will actually increase the damage done. Like inc de basically increase the damage of all your moves, including your sync move. But it's only by 5%, about 5% per level, which is not a lot. So you don't have to worry about that. And then increasing your move level will also expand your sync grid, which we'll talk about later. Sync grid is very important in this game. And then once you get to 5 out of 5, which is the max move level, the next time you get a duplicate of that sync pair, you get like power ups. So if so if so for example if it's a three stars so if it's a three star sync pair, you get three star power up, four star you get four star power up, five star sync pairs you get five star power ups. Power up, the power ups are also quite important to increase your potential, which we will talk about later. Now we're gonna talk about move candies. Then where to get them and then who should you use them on. This no candy thing, make sure you pay attention because they are very, very important, very, very valuable, and you have to use it very wisely so you don't regret. So, like I said before, move candies increase your move level. And there are 3 star, 4 star, and 5 star candy. So, you go to potential move level, you just click like missing pair, and then you can go to level up moves, and you can have the candies, right? So, this is a striker candy. So, there's like different candies, there's like each, each candy for each row, right? So, there's Strike, strike candy, pack and support candy, and then there's also three star, four star, and five star candies. There's also like the general candies. There's also like this general candy, which you can use on tech, strike, or support. Any of them. There's also four and five star, but I don't have them in my collection. And then there is also this egg move candy, which increases the move level for eggs because eggs work a bit differently than like regular sting press, which we will talk about later. Now the three star and four star candies are usually easier to get. You can easily like you, you can easily get them by beating some stages in the event. But five star is very very like exclusive, important, like very like probably the best item in the game. And the only way to get them is by exchanging them in the shop. You can exchange the coins, the move candy coins, right? Like this coin thing, twenty of them. You can exchange for them. Then. Where you get the coin, you get them from events basically. You can exchange them in the events, and then you can. And then once you get 20, you can get a coin. You also get the move candy coin from this. This like progression system thing, which we'll talk more later, right? You can get them like here. Here, you can get them there. Those candies are very valuable, and you have to use them very wisely. Who should you use your candies on? It's. A bit complicated, a bit subjective, but there's a few general rules you have to follow. The most important rule is that you only use the candies on sync pairs that are limited. Okay, so you only use sync pairs that are limited. So you don't use your candies on like let's say, let's say Lyra for example, because she's not limited. You can get her from a general pool. Don't use the candy on the general pool sync pairs. Only use them on limited sync pairs like for example Cynthia, right? Is she is limited? Special costume Jasmine is also limited. You can use your candies on them because they are limited. Okay, very very important. Here is another tier list on like which sync pair you should use your candy on. So basically, the higher tier, then you you should have higher priority on them, right? Like Signal Suit Leaf, uh, Anniversary End, and Signal Suit Lusamine, which means that they are really really strong and they require two out of five grade to get the maximum potential. I will put the link in the description so you can check it out. It's made by some guys on Discord, the Pokemon Masters Discord. 
and it's also three star and four star, right? Like you can candy, you should candy like the the freezing pairs, right? Some of the freezing pairs that it's not in the general scout, you should use a candy on them. Yeah, three star and four star are usually easier to get, so that is fine. But five star, make sure you make sure you get some reference from the tier list, right? Make sure you don't. You sit on the wrong sync pair and regret it later because it's very limited. So now I'm going to talk about the sync grid, which is an important part of this game. So to access sync grid, you just click sync grid. Then a lot of characters have them. Usually, oh, every single five star has them. Almost every single five star. And then the three star, four star, only some of them has them. Which is sad. Like for example, let's go to Lyra. So this is how a sync grid looks like. Something like this. You can customize it, and then each tile has like a like an effect on them with different energy costs. Like for example, on inside up MPR three, which is seven energy. Then we have here seven energy as well. We have here eight energy. So each of them costs different energy. And then they also use this thing called the sync orb, which is this thing. Like for example, I make a new grid. You can you can click select multiple, and then you can select like multiple. Make sure that the grids, make sure the towers are connected to each other. You cannot like skip here and then you skip on the top here. No, it doesn't work like that. It has to be con it has to be connected. And then you have 60 energy to use, right? The remaining energy. And then it's also directly correlated to the number of sync orbs you use. So basically it means that every time you use energy, select a or select a tower that is not like this ring thing. The ring here is free, but then it uses sync orb as well. Then other than that, everything else uses like energy and sync orb. So every time you select a tile, you use energy as well as sync orbs, right? So you can connect them. Sync orbs are very, sync grids are very, very important because they make some bad sync pairs at like one out of five, like move level to like, if you have them at like two out of five, right? So move level is quite important, right? Two out of five minimum to fully access the grid. So a one out of five grid looks something like this, right? You, you will see like these locked things. So, so you need like 2 out, of, 2 out of 5 and 3 out of 5 to fully unlock them. So when you use everything, it should cost you 60 energy as well as 7, 750 sync orb, which is the regular sync orb. And I guess 7500 core of sync orb, which is this yellow thing. It's very, I don't know why the many is so complicated, but basically one regular sync orb is 10 yellow core orb sync orbs. It's very complicated, I don't know why they made like this, but yeah. So you can like turn on this button, which means that it will automatically convert it to for you, which is you know it's good, save your time. So just remember that one regular sync orb for a specific sync pair is ten yellow core of sync orbs. So the entire grid costs you sixty energy and seven hundred and fifty sync orb for a specific sync pair, or seven thousand five hundred yellow core of sync orbs. It's complicated, I know. Then to farm for sync orbs, you just go to explore, go to the training area, and then you just sync orb area. It doesn't cost you stamina as well, so make sure to do this every single day because, like I said, sync grids are very important for sync pairs because they make sync pairs better. They also get sync orbs from events, from missions, and all that. Now I'm going to talk about gears, which are a bit complicated as well. So you can equip, you can equip your gears here. Here is basically something you can equip, right? And then you increase your stats. So you can like equip them here. And then you can upgrade them as well. So you just click upgrade gear. Then you can upgrade them. There is like one star, two star, and three star gear, right? So here are one star, then oh, not two star, then three star. And then there's there's also like different types of gear. It's like the bracelet bandana as well as pins and they also increase different stats so you do have to level them up now to get the gears one star and two star gears you can get them from pretty much every co-op stage i guess ex plaza you can get them here you can also get them in main co-op right you can get them here as well you can also get them from gear events which is like an like a limited event right now there's a dragon type gear event running you can get them here as well and then for three star gears you only get them from this gear event you cannot get them anywhere else so if there's a gear event running make sure to like grind for the gears right and then you can exchange for three star gears here you can also get it from like drops right there's a chance to drop them as well here right and yeah you should focus on three star gears right because two star one star gears are 
obviously worse than 3 star gears because 3 star gears increase more stats right now to unlock your level cap you need duplicate gears and for example i want to unlock the level cap for bandana i have to click ok here i just have to, se I just have to select it and then click ok and then i can unlock level cap like that then i click ok i can unlock the level cap so you can use up to four of them and then it will reach to level 15 which is the max cap to upgrade your gear and then also one thing is to remember to lock your gear okay you have to lock your gear because you might accidentally you might accidentally exchange them right you can exchange gears as well okay so you go shop and then exchange gear if you exchange gear you will get like this stuff which is good because they help you upgrade your three star gears okay so let's say if you upgrade dragon gear you get a like dragon stuff to upgrade your dragon gear right just exchange them you get the gear material now i'm just gonna demonstrate you guys on like how to upgrade the gear from the beginning so let's say i want to upgrade this ghost gear okay so i just click on this so i just upgrade it then just click, click, clicking this it's a very tedious process honestly okay so i have reached the max cap as you can see here so i have to unlock the level cap okay so i unlock the level cap and then i just unlock just unlock everything and then it can, i can upgrade it to level 15 Right, so I unlock the level cap and then I can continue upgrading them. Also I forgot to mention that upgrading gears cost you coins. But then it's not a big deal because coins are very easy to get in the game. I mix up my gear. It's very simple. So let's say if I don't have enough this item, all you need to do is just go to the shop. Right, go to shop, you exchange the items, eh, you exchange gears, and then you just it to ghosts because I'm focusing on ghosts, right? So I just I just exchange all of this, right? I just exchange them all. Then I'll get like materials. You also get some coins as well. But then the coins are very little. And yeah, that's how you upgrade gears. Very simple. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about lucky skills and where to get them. So lucky skills, like I said earlier in the video, is like a an additional passive skill for your sinker. Now to unlock your lucky skill, you have you need like lucky skills as well as the scrolls. For example, let's say I want to unlock lucky skill for maybe Rosa. So I need this scroll thing. Okay, I learn it and then I can unlock lucky skill. But then that's not all. You have to use the cookies as well. Right, these cookies. And then where you get the cookies, it's there's a few ways you can get them. You can get them through an event called Blissy Bonanza, which is not here at the moment. It's a good event, BZ Bonanza. It usually runs like once a, once a month or once every two months or something like that. It's a good way to get lucky cookies. You can also get them through uh, Better Villa, which we'll touch on later. They give you lucky skills as well. And then you can also call up Better Villa, right? The, the call in Better Villa. You can you have a chance to get them as well. But then the best way is, the best way is definitely Better Villa because you just have to beat them and then you get them. There is also like 1 star to 3 star lucky skills. Obviously the higher stars the better skills you get. Right, like we have 1 star, 2 star and 3 star. Then there's like different types of cookies as well. Some cookies will increase your stats. Some cookies will like negate some effect. Some cookies will protect you from status conditions or something like that. And yeah, at the time of recording this video, there is also a new type of lucky skill called the Deluxe and Guaranteed lucky skills and then they are only allowed from legendary gauntlet which at the time of recording this video it's not out yet so we have this lucky cookie thing i will link the i will put the link in the description to check it out so like at the bottom row here we have the deluxe cookie which is the new one and it's not released yet and yeah you can literally like browse every single skill in the cookie obviously the three star one will be best one because they have a highest chance to give you the best skill but the deluxe cookie which is not out yet seems very convincing because they have like really good skills as well and there's like few new skills only in deluxe cookie and then guaranteed lucky cookie is basically a guaranteed chance to get that specific lucky skills so yeah you just have to check here and then make sure you choose use the right cookies now a few tips for uh lucky skills typically for damage dealers the best one would be critical strike 2 because that's a 20 percent increase when you're when your attacks crit, so for example, uh, Torko with Critical Strike 2, but then not all, but not all the damage dealers would need 
critical strike 2. Like for example, Brandon. Brandon has Live Storm, which decreases special attack. So instead of critical strike 2, you should give him Dauntless. So your special attack will not decrease every time you use Live Storm. And then for tanks, the best one to give would be Vigilance. Right? For example, let's say Rosa. Usually, like most supports would need Vigilance. So let's say I'll try and give Rosa Vigilance. So you just keep re rolling until you get the lucky skill. It's a bit annoying because it's all random. And yeah, I got it. Vigilance. Good. And yeah, then, like I said, and then the same thing as the other one. Not all tanks require Vigilance because some tanks already have Vigilance in the team skill. Like, for example, Dawn. Dawn and Torterra. She already has Vigilance in the passive, so instead you can give her like Defense Crush 2 or something else. This will probably be outdated after a few months because like I said, new, the new lucky skills are coming up and they seem to be even better than like Critical Strike 2. There's like some skills that can increase even more damage under certain conditions. Because Critical Strike 2 only increases 20%, the new skill seems to increase 30%. So that's a bigger increase. Now I'm gonna talk about how to increase potential and then talk about 6 star EX as well. So to increase potential, you just have to go to sync first, and then you just go to potential and move level, and then yeah, here's the list. So obviously, 3 star, 4 star, 5 star, and then each increase uses different materials, right? But unfortunately, I don't have any 3 stars, so I cannot show you that, but for 4 stars, you require 4 star power up to upgrade to 5 star. And then from 5 star, you can actually upgrade it to 6 star. And then after that, you can EX them, so they like gain extra bonus and stuff. Not all the Sync Press have 6 star EX, but yeah, for example, Raihan, he has 6 star EX, you can give 20 of them here. You can also give them through the tickets, which which you can get from Champion Stadium. So like after you upgrade 20 of them, you will require to use Champion Spirits to make them 6 star EX. And 6 star EX is really, really good. Depending on the role, striker, if, if it's a 6 star EX striker, your sync move will do AoE damage, which is very nice. If it's a tech sync pair, your sync move will deal 50% more damage. If it's a support, you will double your sync buff when you sync for the first time. So about the sync buff, we'll talk about that later, but it's very very good. All the 6 star EX have like really really good bonuses. And then to get a 5 star, you can just exchange them in the shop if you have excess 4 star materials. Just here, you can exchange them if you want. You can also get them through Champion Stadium using like tickets, right? Like this thing, tickets. And the tickets you can you can be it can be used to convert to five star power ups. So if you want to exchange it, I recommend doing ten of them. Like for example, you do ten of the regular five star, and then you exchange ten of them, ten of the tickets. The reason is because the more you exchange the tickets, the more expensive they become. Like on the top here, it says the current one requires 20 tickets. And then after, change, after exchanging 5 more, it becomes 25. Basically, it means that if you exchange 1 to 5 tickets, it's 20 per 5 star power up. And then if you exchange 6 to 10 5 star power ups, it becomes 25 per 5 star power up. Then it just increases more and more. So I recommend you to, to just use 10 of, to just exchange 10 of them, which costs you 225 tickets. You don't exchange like too much and then it becomes very expensive, right? So 1010 is always is usually what I go for. Also I forgot about to talk about uh Champion Spirit. So Champion Spirit you you can only get them from from Champion Stadium. There's no other way you can get Champion Spirit. So this one is the Champion Spirit. There's no other way you can get Champion Spirit. You can get them you can only get them from this place, right? Champion Stadium. You need them to 6 star EX. You might have the question of who to 6 star EX first. Because 6 star EX is like the 5 star power is quite valuable as well. Because you don't get them like you don't get them too often, especially as a newer player, because if you play a long time you'll start getting duplicates and then you get 5 star power-ups. But if you're a new player, it's quite difficult to get 5 star power-ups. You might not even have a 6 star EX until like 3 months of playing or something. Now here is another tier list for you. It's also made by some guys on Discord. You can just you can see here right, right. Who to six star EX? The higher the tier list, like the higher the placement, the better the six star EX value. And they also typically show you like the best support, the best sync press here. So yeah, just you can just refer to this list. So it's this list is quite accurate. 
so yeah just refer to this list or if you have any questions you can like comment on my videos or something or you can join my discord server to ask me questions as well the link will be in the description now there are eggs in this game so to get eggs you can get them from training area there, there's a chance to drop them here pretty much any stage here there's also like the egg events which is not uh, available right now so there's usually egg events for like different types and then like for example if it's a fire and grass type egg event you will get like fire and grass type eggs and then you can hatch them there's also a chance to hatch uh, shiny pokemon like for example i think i have like shiny lapras that like, yeah here we have shiny lapras and then there's also like different passives right there's like one two and three passives typically i would just recommend you to just throw away the one and two passives right so like you can you can see like the bars here right you can see the bars how many passives they have you can just donate click donate and then just donate them and then when you and then when you donate them you will get like this egg research ticket which you can exchange in the shop you click exchange items and then you can go to the monthly one then you can exchange for like this very tart thing Imperator thing is used to increase affinity okay, so you can exchange for them you can also exchange for like this one star power up thing you can exchange for them as well to increase the egg potential when you hatch the egg the egg is at one star it can be raised up to five star so you can go to affinity okay, okay actually okay let me just uh, guide you and show you like from one star to five star okay so let's go to the egg and you can just form a sync pair Preferably, preferably a three star, like a three passive one. Let me try and find a shiny. For example, I pair up with Tangela, a shiny Tangela. Then the next thing I do is go to Affinity, find the shiny Tangela, and then I give it like this very tart thing to increase its affinity. Giving them will also increase their stats as well. Though the egg mods are usually like bad compared to like regular sync pairs. But if you like collecting them, then you can just go ahead, you know, just spend this chart thing because no other thing pairs, no other, no other thing in this game uses like this chart thing. So it's a three or two or three, or three, and then you can max it out using this three star very tart, which you can get from like at the egg event as well. Then once you max out the affinity, you can increase its potential. You go to potential, and then you can switch view on the top right corner to your egg view. Right, you can switch it, and then you find your Tangela. Also, you can increase the move candy as well. I give it all of them to 5 out of 5. Right? Then you can increase the potential with this 1 star power up thing. You can exchange it up to 5 star, but then it's like, it's a bit of a waste because, like I said, it's not. Eggmons are usually not that good. But there is like a few that are not bad that you can consider taking. Right? So let's say I just get to 4 star. Yeah, you can get it to after 5 star if you want, but it's... I don't really want to do that. It's a bit of a waste. Now, the other thing is that you can use paid gems. Right? You go to shop, you go to purchase bun bundles. You can use paid gems here to like buy all this stuff as well if you want to. If you really, really want to like collect the eggs and stuff. So the accelerator pass is basically like... Like every time you hatch an egg, it will automatically put another egg into the incubator. So you don't have to like log in every like 8 hours or something to like manually put it in. The action pass basically halves the time to hatch eggs. Of course it's up to you and then they only last for 14 days as well. And there's also the expansion and the incubator, the extra one. They all use paid gems so like I say it's up to you. I don't really care about eggs so I don't buy them. Now here is another infographic. So it basically tells you like which egg is good, right? If you are free to play, just other, you can consider taking all of this, right? Once you have better sync pairs, you probably already ditch them and you don't care about them anymore. But if you just start, if you're just starting and you get these sync pairs, yeah, the when the weather setters are probably best ones because weather is pretty strong in this game. So if you don't have like rain dance user or you don't have sandstorm sandstorm user, you can form a sync pair with the egg and then summon the weather. Now I'm gonna talk about what are better points. Better points or BP in short is like a like a, prog like a progression system in this game. But like there's this progression rope thing right so it starts at zero and you go all the way to 10,000 points so it's a progression system thing then every there's like milestones where you can get like this ticket stuff right and 10,000 is the like grand prize you get like the, you get like the BP sync pair super voucher and then you can also get like this 
voucher, the regular BP Singapore voucher. And then you can exchange them. On the bottom right, you click on the button thing, and then you can exchange them. You can exchange like for this sing pairs. Uh, they are not bad actually. And then the master sing pair. There's also master sing pair, like one, two, three of them here. You can exchange for them as well. And they are not that bad as well. And then not only that, the progression also gives you like pretty good rewards. Like you can get faster power ups here. You can get the coins here. Right, you can get sing orbs, all that stuff, so it's pretty good. And then to get your BP, there's a few ways. The first way is through missions, right? You do missions, you can get them as well. Other way is through it's through you go to event and then the daily rotation battle. This thing. Do this every single day because they give you like 80, baby 80, yeah, 60, 60 battle points every single day. You can also get them from Champion Stadium, but Champion Stadium you require like a lot of points. You need like how much? You need like four thousand five hundred to get even one BP. And also, for example, BP sing pair. Let's say you go for Lieutenant Search. Okay, BP sing pairs are technically limited, kinda because they are not in the general pool scout, right? So you can level up, level like increase their move level. For example, Lieutenant Search. Right, it, it costs you like 4 star candies, but you don't really need to worry because it's not that difficult to get. And usually the 3 star and 4 star sync press in the general scout, you will like get to 5 or 5 very quick. So I'll just use the candies on like DP sync press and also free to play sync press, uh, sync press you get from the story as well. Now I'm gonna tell you guys what DP sync press you should prioritize. So in my opinion, the best one is Eternal Surge and Waichu. Mainly because he can buff crit. Buffing crit is uh, like like the best thing a support can have. It's buffing crit is very very good. Then he can also buff attack. And then he can also paralyze with thunder wave. Really really good. And then he has like uh, in his sync grid he has like team fast track four here. Doing fifty percent chance to plus one speed for your entire ally when you use a move. Really really solid. Then the next sync pair I I would recommend prioritizing is. Either Erika, Tengala, or Morty and Miss Magus. Probably Morty and Miss Magus because he's a potion user. Potion is really useful in this game. And his trainer move is to pass two defense with defense, which is really, really good. Right? So you can tank, basically. Then he also has Astonish and Confuse Ray. Very, very useful moves as well. Erika is also pretty good. Especially useful in stalling because she has both infestation and toxic, so I can use that on your opponent and just stall the battle in specifically in Champion Stadium. We will talk more about that later. So these are the like regular sing, sing pairs, right? And then for the master sing pair, I would prefer Cobalion, but I haven't even used my ticket yet because I don't find the need to use them, and they're also valuable. So I'm just waiting for them to release new sing pairs. So the best one, if you really want to use your ticket, would be Cobalion mainly because of their hit or plus because you know crit is very useful. He also has a master passive because he's a master sync pair. Now we're gonna talk a bit about the main story. So the main story, there's like v the PMR arc, villain arc, and then legendary adventures. The legendary adventures, legendary adventures is not really related to the main story, but PMR arc and villain arc are like main story stuff. So PML arc. You should get to chapter 5 as soon as possible because you get like a really good sync pair at chapter 5. I'll, just in case you haven't played it yet, I'm not gonna spoil who it is, but that sync pair is really really good. That sync pair can heal, can buff defense and buff speed, can tank as well, really good uh, support. Make sure to get chapter 5 ASAP. And then the story also doesn't cost any stamina, so you can just do it on, at your own pace. There's also the hard mode for story, so hard mode basically the same battle but more difficult and then they give like free gems as well so make sure to do that there's also the villain arc the villain arc is like somewhat similar but there's like each region there's only two at the moment but more will be added soon there's also the hard mode for like free gems and more difficult battles and yeah you can just do them at your own pace now let's talk about the events so here is the event make sure to do your events okay because the events usually have their own missions and they get free gems from them so make sure to do them make sure to complete them and then and then some of the events have like this bonus thing here so if you use the, this specific sync pairs in battle you get like bonus rewards so make sure to look at them and make sure to use them so you get like 
the exchange items quicker and you can exchange more stuff and for the events they usually have like daily missions as well and they give you like extra rewards right and then you can battle them once a day only and usually events they also have like this battle thing which gives you like free free rewards like sometimes they give you like free four star and three star candies which is really good so make sure to look out for them, make sure to do the events, complete the missions because they give free gems, they give you free stuff. Now let's talk about legendary adventures. This is really good because you get free sync pairs by completing them. So there's one legendary sync pair for each region, so there's 8 total but right now there's only 5 but more will be added. And by early February 2022, you will have all 8 already and make sure to do them, okay? You should do like... Xerneas and Professor Sycamore as soon as possible which is the gen 6 legendary they are like one of the most broken supports in this game right Xerneas and Sycamore way too strong and after that I will suggest you to prioritize on Cyrus and Giovanni because they are also really really strong when you do the legendary adventures you can also exchange items here right Make sure you don't exchange them for this make sure to once you finish the event make sure to go to the increased potential Thing and increase their potential there okay make sure to increase their potential because they are like freezing pairs right like for example Cyrus is already max for me make sure to increase their potential because they are free if you accidentally exchange them for like the other stuff you will have to use your own 5 star power ups to increase them which is expensive now I'm gonna talk about a uh, better villa this, so there's basically like 30 halls here and then you have to beat all the 30 holes in 2 weeks and then you can only use 9 sync pairs a day so if all your 9 sync pairs get taken out like today then you have to wait tomorrow to like try again every 5 holes there's like this boss battle thing right this boss battle is usually like 9 sync pairs versus 3 sync pairs so it's like you use 3 they use 9 once you beat them you get like bonus rewards and or bonus items that help you better and yeah the bonus items are usually like this stuff here the bottom here right or they can be like recovery items as well that can help you but 2 weeks 30 holes it's not that bad it's not that difficult to do it's quite easy and then make sure you complete them because you get free gems as well as lucky cookies lucky cookies are very are one of the more limited items because you only get them like on few places in this game so the tip for this is to just have like a decent variety of sync pairs if you play this game for like a few months already and you want to like beat all the stage in one day because you get a medal for that the tip for that would be to use sync pairs that can that can buff your stats without using like a trainer move or something for example Professor Sycamore and Xerneas they are really really good in in Better Villa mainly because when you sync with them you max out your you max out your speed special attack and special defense very strong Another good sync pair would be Leon and Charizard because because they have this passive the MP Rekindle 2 so basically after you use a trainer move you only have one use right there's a chance that you will get back the move point after using your attacks and stuff yeah those are just a few examples so basically just look out for sync pairs that can buff stats without using a trainer move or they can like easily regain their trainer move and Better Villa also has a co-op which you can do once a day and by doing that you get like you have a chance of getting like 3 star cookies for me personally I always forget to do them so that's kinda funny kinda sad but yeah and then once you beat the entire battle villa at least once you have an option to skip them you can skip up to 419 and then you start at 420 by skipping you still get the first time rewards like the gems, the lucky cookies but you won't be getting bonus rewards from horse 5, 10 and 15 which is the boss stages which is not a big deal because the rewards they give are pretty bad anyway so skipping is a no-brainer for me it's the rewards are not that good for horse 5, 10 and 15 so just skip to 19 and then just save your time now I'm gonna talk about champion stadium which is a pretty difficult mode in this game Champion Stadium is basically like Elite 4 and Champion in the main games, right? So for Elite 4, one Champion, you have to beat them. And then you can only use 3 Sync Pairs for each stage, and then you cannot use the same Sync Pairs for each stage. So let's say if I use uh, Blue on Wheel, then I cannot use Blue on other stages. Then, then there is also like Master Mode, which is this thing. Master Mode will allow you to like pick points 
And then depending on what points you pick, the opponents will gain like some advantage. Like for example, if I pick this attack, I get 100 points, but the opponents will get like 30% extra attack and special attack. And then to unlock Master Mode, you have to beat the stages with 18 different types. And then you need 2 weeks to do this because you can only use 15 sync pairs per week, so that is 15 types, and then the next week you have to use the other 3 types. So once you unlock it, you can use the reset button, then you can just reset it, and then do Master Mode. The Master Mode, there's like this point system up to 10,000 points at the time of recording this video. And yeah, you just get like rewards basically, depending on like what parameters you pick for the stages, right? So to get maximum 10,000 points, you need 2,000 points per stage, which is very difficult to do if you just play this game for like a few months. You do need like good sync pairs and stuff to like beat them. It's not, it's not easy. This mode is not easy. At the time of recording this video, we only have Kento, Johto, Unova, and Alola Champion Stadium. But more will be added as time goes on. And if you just started out, I recommend you to get at least 3,900 points, maybe 4,200 points because Champion Spirit, because that's like the best rewards you can get. You get like 5 star, like the 5 star power up ticket, which you can exchange for 5 star power ups. And then once you get more 5 star power ups, you can 6 star EXing pairs, and then you can like beat the stages more easily, and then you can get like more points. So 4,200 points is the target you want to get. After that, 7,500 points is the next target you want. And then once you think you're good, you have a lot of 6 star EXing pairs, good sync pairs, you can try 10,000 points, which is quite difficult, especially for newer players, so you do not have to play for a while. To reach that point. Now I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna teach you like some tips, like what parameters to pick for Master Mode to get some free easy points. So physical and damage reduction, which is the reflect and light screen, very good because you can easily overcome that by bringing a crit support, right? Because crit support ignores this effect. Make sure to take no status condition. If you don't plan to poison, burn, or slip them, you can take that. Take no stat reduction. If you don't plan to debuff the enemy stats, half the ally healing decrease. Take this if you don't really plan to heal much. It's also a free point. Gradual healing is also a good one, but it really depends. It may be annoying because your opponents can heal, but if you can damage more than they can heal, then you go ahead and pick this parameter. And then the most important one, the ally move gauge minus two. This is literally a free 300 points. So with all this, you have already 800 points. Right. Then if you beat all the 5 stages, that's 4000 points already. Now there is like 2 very popular and good strategies you can use. The first strategy is the pre-sync clear. Basically what this means is you defeat the opponents before they use their sync move. And then you usually take all the offensive parameters. So on top of all of this, you take all the offensive parameters like strength, power up, power on hit, get strength, attack. Basically all the offensive parameters. Right, so you just basically use your sync move and just KO all of them before they use the sync move. Right, and then make sure you have a good tank to tank their attacks, because having all offensive parameters means that the opponents will do a lot of damage. And then sync buff as well. Sync buff is a must for increasing clear because if your opponent cannot sync, they cannot get the buff. The other good strategy to use is poison stall. Basically, what you do is you stall the enemy, you poison and trap your enemy. And then you just keep tanking their hits until they die. I have a more in-depth guide on this. You can click the top right corner to view the video. So I'm gonna summarize this. Just take all the defense stuff, all the HP stuff. Right. Just take it. Don't take no status condition because you need to like you know poison them. I don't recommend taking stat reduction as well because you have to debuff them. So just take all the of the defensive stuff. Gradual healing. You take defense, just take all the defensive stuff. Basically. You should take critical hit defense as well. Because you're not gonna do damage to them anyways, so you're just gonna store them until they die. So just check my guide to learn more about it. And then another thing is that you can click on the tips, right? And then you can just read through them. You can get like some hints on them, right? Like they will tell you like for example for wheel stage, it tells you that to use ghost type moves. And they also tell you that it will use X defense or X special defense or to raise defense special defense. So they tell you to use crit buff. But one thing, important important thing is that don't use the recommended teams for this. Don't use the recommended teams for the stages because the recommended teams are usually pretty bad. Some of them are really really bad. Like this one is not that bad. The Phoebe, Fentina, Martin, it's not too bad but still it's... Just make your own team, it's better. 
I even have a dedicated series where I use recommended teams. You can check it out if you want, I guess. Now I'm gonna talk about Legendary Arena, which is another pretty difficult game mode. So basically, there's like three different parts. So the very hard is, is obviously the most difficult one. And then they have each legendary Pokemon that you battle will have three bars, and you have to KO three bars in order to win. And then they have like gimmicks. Usually they have like some sort of gimmick. Like for example, you see, its gimmick is that you have to paralyze it, burn it, you have to inflict status condition and status changes. Status changes meaning like flinching confusion to do damage. And then let's say, for example, we have Lactias. Lactias, you have to debuff its stats. The more stats you debuff, the more damage you can do. So you have like 30 sync pairs that you can use, right? It says here 30 sync pairs to beat the stage. But there's like event missions, right? This thing. You get free 1000 gems here by completing the missions. And then the missions usually have a requirement. It says that you have to use, use a lot of sync pairs, you have to use ghost sync pairs, you have to use gym leader sync pairs. You have to use three of them, and then you cannot use more than nine to beat the stage. But you don't have to use like all nine in a row, you don't have to use like three Alola, three gym leader, and three ghost type sync pairs for your nine teams. You can spread them out. So for example, you can use like Alola sync pairs, three Alola sync pairs as your first team, you let them die, and then you take out Yuxi using your other three sync pairs. So you don't have to like put them all in a row. You can like beat Yuxi three separate times to get the 1000 gems. There's also tips, right? The better tips. Make sure to read them because they are very useful. But the same thing as Gemma Stadium, don't use the recommended team because they are pretty bad, right? But make, but you can read them like the gimmicks, what they do. It's pretty useful. Just don't use the recommended teams. At the time of recording this video, Legendary Gauntlet is not out yet. So we don't know everything about it. But what we do know is that Legendary Gauntlet has three Legendary Arenas. And then you just have to keep beating them in a row. And then the higher win streak you have, the more rewards you get. This would be this is definitely very difficult, probably the most difficult game mode in the game. So you do have to play this game for quite a while until you get like pretty good sync pairs. And then you also get like exclusive rewards like the three star deluxe lucky cookies, which is not released yet, but they seem to be pretty good. It's still too early, but I guess I have like some tips. So the tip would be to spread out your strong sync pairs basically. Don't put like all your OP sync pairs in one team. Because this game mode isn't about blasting through the enemy, kill them quickly. It's about spreading them and beat them consistently and just don't overkill them, right? Just don't overkill and then just, you know, you just you have to spread them out. So basically what I'm saying is that don't put like, for example, Kento Trio, don't put a Kento Trio in one team. Like, they can be separated to three different teams, right? Instead of one team, you can have three teams. So that is good because you want to get as much win streak as you can. The higher win streak you have, more rewards you get. But yeah, that's really the only tip I can think of because you know this game in this game mode is new, we don't know everything about it. Now what are sync moves? Sync moves are basically like a mechanic for this game. You can kinda of treat it like a Z move from Alola. It's like a hard hitting ultimate move. And then the way it works is that you have a countdown meter. And every time you use a move, the the countdown decreases. And then once you hit zero, you use your sync move. You can use it like multiple times per battle. And then some sync moves will do more damage depending on the description of the sync move, right? Like for example, we have Sophocles. His sync move description is that the most power increases when a target is flinching. Usually, Tech has this description, right? That increases damage when you do something. And then every and then every time you use a sync move, you get a sync buff. So what are sync buffs? So every time you get a sync buff, it's a fifty percent increase to your entire team's attack. And special attack. So every time you use the sync move, you do more damage, right? And then every sync buff is 50% damage. Keep in mind that your opponent can do that as well, right? So if your opponent sync, they also get a 50% damage buff. If you have a 6 side EX support, you can like double the sync buff, right? So usually you get one sync buff when you use a sync move. If you use if you have a 6 side EX support and then you use a sync move using that support, you get two sync buffs. So a 6 side EX support is quite good because having two sync buffs means that the damage will double because 50% plus 50% is 100% extra damage which is double. So critical hits in this game are really really important. Critical hits max at plus 3. So at plus 1 is 50% chance to crit, plus 2 is 80% chance to crit, and then plus 3 is 100% chance to crit. So make sure that 
when you build a team, you need to have crit support because crit increases damage by 50%. And on top of that, if you crit, you will ignore the opponent's defense and special defense buffs. And also, if your opponent has light screen or reflect setup, it's kind of similar to the main games. So, single move acceleration is instead of minus one single move countdown, you get like minus two or minus three. Like, for example, we have Lusamin here. Here's so Lusamin. If you look at his trainer move description, it says that it reduces the user's single countdown by two. So it means that you minus two single countdown, but then you have to take into account the turn you use it. So it's technically minus three. Single move acceleration is quite useful as well, especially when you use a sing the first time, and then you want to use the sing a second time. But then sometimes your move queue screws up, and your opponent sync the first time before you sync your second time. See, so single move acceleration will prevent that from happening. So you can you can always do your second sync before your opponent do your first sync. Now terrain, weather, and zones. So terrain, weather are a bit different. It works a bit differently than the main games. So weather, we have sun, we have rain, we have sand, we have hail. So sun increases fire damage by fifty percent, but it does not nerf water damage. I like the name. I like the main games. Similarly, it's also similar for rain. Rain will increase water by 50, water damage by fifty percent. The rain doesn't nerf fire damage. Hell and sand works a bit similar to the main games. It, both of them you take damage every time you use a move. Terrain, weather, and zones they usually last for like one entire sync turn. So the tip is to see when the icon starts blinking. So when you see the icon starts blinking, you should set up your terrain, weather, or zone again. Because when it blinks, it's, it's telling you that it's about to wear off. And then when you use it, it will refresh the duration of the weather terrain or zone again. Now, zone is a new thing. The main game does not have this. At the time of recording this, only two sync player has them, which is Lucas Dialga and Renegade Cynthia and Giratina. So zone is very easy to understand. So let's say if you are dragon zone, so let's say if you are ghost zone, then you increase ghost damage by 50%. Very easy. If you are dragon zone, you increase Dragon damage by 50%. It's very easy. It's like that. Then terrain. Terrain also works quite similarly to the main games. So if you have electric terrain on, you do 50% more damage with electric moves. And then you also cannot fall asleep if electric terrain is up. So it's kind of similar to the main game as well. Now reflect and light screen, pretty much the same as the main games. So when you use reflect and light screen, it lasts for about one sync turn. So similar to weather terrain and zone. And then when it starts blinking, it means that it's about to wear off. So you should use your reflect and light screen again to refresh the timer. And then the damage is not reduced. If you have reflect setup, you receive less physical damage. If you have light screen setup, you receive less special attack, special attack damage. And then if you crit, they ignore the damage reduction. So crit is very important. The move gauge acceleration is pretty easy to understand. It just increases your move gauge. So when you use it, your move gauge will fill up quicker. It's a good move to have when you're running a really heavy gauge team, like maybe you have two strikers with four gauge moves, then move gauge acceleration is very useful. So default is quite similar to main games as well. It removes the field effect like reflect like screen, terrain. They also remove zones as well. They also remove like move gauge acceleration, critical hit defense, all that. But the only thing that it doesn't remove is the weather. So confusion, trap, flinch and restrain, they are also known as status changes. So they're quite similar to the main games, Confusion. If you confuse the opponent, there's a chance that they hit themselves in this confusion. If they are trapped, but every time they use a damaging move, they will take damage from trap. Flinching. Flinching is probably a bit different from the main games because in the main games you flinch only one turn, right? In this game, flinching lasts for like a while. So if, if you flinch an opponent, they cannot move for a while. So which means that if you time it right, you can actually prevent your opponent from using attacking moves and then you will just receive less damage. So you do have to time your move queue properly, which I will teach you in the move queue section, don't worry. Then restrain. Restrain is probably the most useless thing out of the four here. Because restrain prevents your opponent from switching out. But the thing is that in this game, the opponent doesn't even switch Pokemon, so it's kind of useless. But restrain does like favor some sync pairs. Like for example, Celine. Selene has a passive called Hold of Search 5, so her damage increases by 50% when the target is restrained. So yeah, it's still kind of useful, it's just that it doesn't have the additional like switching out effect, right? Now I'm going to talk about 2 turn moves. 2 turn moves, unfortunately, in this game is pretty, it's pretty bad, with a few exceptions. 
you move it twice, so it's like moves like fly or shadow force, right? You use a move once, you disappear, and then you attack the second turn. Unfortunately, it's a two turn move, but you only minus one single countdown, which is one of the reasons why it sucks in this game, which is kind of sad. But then there's a few exceptions like Faulkner and Swallow, or Giratina and Cynthia, right? They are not, they are not bad, right? Shadow Force and Fly, they can, because they have like passive that benefit from using these moves. And then two turn moves is useful in like 1v1 fights when you only have one Pokemon left and then your opponent has one Pokemon left. You can like time it right so that you dodge your opponent's move. Like you time it right, you use Shadow Force right before your opponent uses an attacking move, so you dodge their attack. So counter and protect moves, it's it's also a two turn move, but like you only minus one single counter, which is also kind of sad. But they are not that bad because you can damage them. You can like counter. Counter is good, right? It's like moves like Metal Burst and Miracle. If you take damage, you will reflect the damage back to them. Then protect moves like Obstruct or King Shield. When you use it, you will block a move, which is quite useful sometimes, right? Especially when you're facing an opponent that does a lot of damage. And then if you time it right, you can you can block against high damaging moves like Giga Impact or Hyper Beam. Super effective up next effect. This thing is. It's an interesting gimmick in this game. So basically, it's an effect that increases your next super effective hit by 50%. Some sim players can just casually get it like every few turns or something like that, and then they will do a lot of damage when they are facing against like opponents that are weak to their types. Physical or special move up next effect. So this is also an uh, interesting gimmick. So it's kind of similar to super effective up next, but it increases the damage you do with physical or special attack. And then it can be raised up to 10 ranks, right? So each rank is a 40% extra damage. It's a bit confusing, but not a lot of sync players have this, only a few, because this is also a relatively new gimmick. So there is Mega Evolution in this game. Only certain sync players that have Mega. So for example, we have Blue and Blastoise. The way with Mega is that you just use your sync move, right? The, the sync move description will say that it becomes Mega Blastoise at the end of, after using the sync move. And then when you, and then when you Mega, Obviously, your stat changes, and then sometimes your move and passive order changes. Like for example, if you Mega Cynthia, its attack and defense increases, and then you can see that its Stomping Tantrum changes, changes into Slash, right? So the move changes. The passive can also change. Like for example, Jasmine and Steelix, when you Mega, right, it will gain the last word passive, which is Explosion, basically. But then the sad thing is that. Pokemon like a Mega usually has reduced sync damage to you know to like kind of balance things out. So the so the sync damage will be lesser than those that don't have Mega. There is also Dynamax in this game. Dynamax works quite differently from from the main games because you only use one max move per battle. You can only use one max move for the sync pairs, right? For example, we have Red and Snorlax. You can choose the Dynamax move, right? The, you know, he also has like his own signature move, right? G Max Replenish which restores 1 MP, which is very useful. But then the thing that sucks about this is that using max move does not reduce your single countdown. So instead, most of them have like a trainer move that can reduce single countdown to counter, to like negate the drawback, right? Now I'm sure most of you will be skipping to this part of the video, which I don't blame you, because move kill is one of the most important things in this game. If you master it, you become technically like a pro at this game already. So how move kill works? They usually follow like a zigzag pattern. There's like two different types, right? There's a move queue for Champion Stadium, and then there's a move queue for the regular battle, basically. Like a regular battle villa battle, or a regular event battle, something like that. Now, for a regular battle, it doesn't matter if it's 3v9 or 3v3, 3v6, or battle villa, whatever. They always have this pattern. They have a zigzag pattern. So, mid, right, mid, left, mid, right, sync. Right, mid, left, mid, right, sync, and then repeat. So, they have this pattern. So, if you time things right, you can actually, like, screw up the move queue, right? Like for example, if the left side is about to attack you, you can kill the left side. And then once you kill the left side, if it's a 3v9 battle, they will send out the next Pokemon. And then the left side will still use their move, right? I'll demonstrate it later, right? Because this may be a bit confusing. So they basically just remember that they follow a zigzag pattern. So you can like predict their move. You can even like do flinching or hypnosis on them. Like if you predict that the mid is gonna attack, you flinch them. Then they screw up the move kill. Then they cannot attack you. Then for Champion Stadium, it works differently, a bit differently. If it still follows like mid right, mid left, but then it will do mid mid, and then they sync. Once they sync, the mid will keep attacking you until it's dead. And then once it's dead, it just kind of randomizes either left or right. 
but then it still follows like the zigzag pattern, right? So let's say if the mid dies in German Stadium, if the right attacks you, then the next one will be left, and then right, left, right, left, right, left. So it's it oscillates between the two. They don't attack twice in a row, basically. So if you know this knowledge, then it's good. You're gonna excel in battles. You're gonna win battles more often. Now I'm gonna like demonstrate how like move Q, knowing move Q is good, right? Okay, so for example, let's do a battle Vila stage, okay? Let's just use good old uh, Kanto Trio, demonstrate this. Okay, let's just battle this. So knowing when to move Q is very important, so I'm gonna play this slow so you guys can follow me. Now of course, one thing you need to remember is that when you move Q, make sure to move Q three moves before your opponent move before your opponent uh queues up one move okay so make sure it's three by one three one three one okay this is very important so something like this now the right is gonna attack right the hound the salazo is gonna use flamethrower and then the mid will attack okay Okay, now the Salazzo is gonna attack. And then the Charizard is gonna attack. Right? So you know. Once the Charizard attacks, the uh, Rapidash will attack. So let me sync. Okay, since I know that the Rapidash is gonna attack, I'm gonna Blast Burn the left side. Okay? So I will Blast Burn the left side. And you will see like what happens next. Okay? Get out of the battle a bit. Okay? So blue is gonna use Sky. As you can see, Rapidash uses Swift, right? Okay. So Rapidash uses Swift. Okay. So Rapidash uses Swift, but then Charizard uses Blast Burn on Rapidash, so it dies. So it cannot attack. Okay. I'm sure you guys are starting to get what I mean, right? And then the Light Part comes out. The Light Part attacks, but then I Blast Burn it again. So I just disrupts the move queue entirely, so they cannot even move. Right. Okay, so I hit the light part, and then the light part should die from blast burn. Right, it dies again, and then the next Pokemon sends out. They send out the next Pokemon. And then I blast burn again, so it's gonna die again. Right, okay, so I queue it again. And then I hit the mid. Okay, now I don't know if I can kill it or not, but if I can't, yeah I can, so I'm just gonna single move the meter and just keep hitting the meter. As you can see, like, they can't even move, right? They can't even touch me. They don't even have a chance to use a single move against me. Right, so like that. It should still die, I think. Yeah, it dies again. And yeah, it's very simple. It doesn't die, but then we know that once the middle attacks, the right will attack. But we move Q, attack the right side, making sure it dies. Ah, see, the right has a hack. So if you can predict, it's very nice, right? Because you know exactly what they're gonna do. Unfortunately, they're probably gonna attack us, but it's completely fine. We are still like full HP, basically. So yeah, if you know how to move Q, it's, things become very easy. Sadly, they use a single, which is not a problem at all. But yeah, you get the point, right? If you know exactly when your when the opponent attacks, you can easily just counter them with your own move queue. Just attack them. You can also apply the same thing to like flinching and slipping. Now here is the team building guide, which is also a very important part of this game. If you can build a good team, you are pretty much good to go. There's a few general rules in team building number one do not use the optimized button it's trash it's very bad so let's just start fresh okay so do not use optimize you can usually i just use it to just get the gear right see it automatically puts like go wrong gear that's all but then i don't actually use the sync pair i just customize it myself because the way optimize works is that each sync pair has like a value like a power value basically 
So if you have you doing for like a fire weak stage, it will use like your best, like highest power fire types in pairs. They don't even take into account like your supports or something. They just pick like the highest power one. The next thing you, you need to know is the tactics button, the bottom right corner. It's very very useful this. This is very useful. So by picking that, you can like switch around like who would tank, right? Which one which which sync pair would tank? Like for example, right now I'm putting Leaf to tank. But then if Leaf dies, the second to tank is, is red and then Gladion, something like that. Okay. And then this team is this team is not the best team, but I'm just doing demonstration, right? Okay, now let's get into the actual team building. There's a few rules, right? Rule number one, you need to pick a damage dealer. You need someone that can do damage. Okay. Rule number two, make sure to have some sort of support that can fill the gap of the damage dealer. Like for example, if your damage dealer can max out special attack but cannot buff crit, you need to bring a crit support. And then the next rule is that you need to look at the grids as well. Like for example, if you are using Huda, Huda would have an inertia ability, an inertia passive in the grid. Basically, the more speed increased, the higher the sync move. So you want to consider bringing like a speed support. Then the next rule is that consider bringing weather, terrain, or zone setters. Like if you are using a water sync pair, maybe consider bringing a rain dance user because that will increase the water damage by 50%. Okay, so now so let's like demonstrate, right? Let me just go to Champion Stadium and then let's just build a team from there. For example, let's say we're gonna do a bug stage. Bug with stage. It means that we will need a bug type. It doesn't have to be bug type necessarily because some press can do off type stage as well. So we can just filter to bug. You pick a bug damage dealer. For my case, I will pick Order because he's really strong. Next thing, we look at his stats, look at his moves. You can see that he can max out his own crit with direct plus and then this general move can max out special attack. So he's pretty much a self-sufficient striker. So you don't really need like any support that can buff crit or special attack. But you, can no you may notice that the defense per defense are trash. Right, really bad. So you can consider bringing like some sort of defense buffer. So you go to support, you just sort it to spare defense up and defense up. So you can like just look through, maybe Jasmine. Jasmine can buff special attack, maybe you can put her there. You don't always have to like match the, match the team skills, not necessarily. And then maybe you can bring like a defense support, maybe Skyla. Skyla is a good one because she can also buff. She can also buff speed. She can also heal. So that's like a good choice, right? So this team will be solid. Just make sure you put the tactics. Make sure Outer is the last one. The your damage dealer should always be the last one to tank most of the time. Okay, let's do another example. Let's do Psychic. So of course, we will need a Psychic Sync Pair. So we sort my Psychic. And then we can look through. Maybe we can have Lusamine. Let's do Lusamine. Really, really strong. Then let's look at the stats. She can buff crit. She can max out special attack. So you pretty much don't need like any other support that can buff crit or special attack. But she is a Psychic type, which means, which means you can set up Psychic Terrain. So a good teammate will be Bianca and Musharna because she has Saki Terrain. For last support, you can pretty much pick anyone you want, but preferably an Allowsing pair because she has a Master Passive, a Allowsing Spirit. So it basically means that the more Allowsing pairs you have, the more damage you do and the less damage you take. So just sort everything by Alola. So you pretty much just pick like a support here. Maybe like Kiawe or even Lili, right? Something like that. Obviously, don't put like another striker. I mean, you can you can put another like striker, but it's gonna be gauge issues, right? You don't have, you don't even have anyone that can buff speed or move gauge as a way. So I just bring like a support. It's very simple to build a team, right? It's just like that. Let's do one last example. Let's choose a ghost week stage. So ghost week, we sort by ghost. We look at look through the sync pair. Let's say I go for Morty. Okay, so Morty, he can max out crit. He can buff attack and evasion, but then he cannot max it out himself. He needs to rely on MPR to refresh the move point, which is kind of bad. Then we look at the grid, he has the blind spot. Basically, the more evasion you raise, the higher the sync moves power. But the problem is that he cannot max out his own evasion, right? You only plus one evasion every time you use the trainer move. So if you use it twice, it's only plus two evasion, which is not enough, right? He can still max out crit, but he cannot max out attack. He also cannot max out evasion. 
So we need to think about this, right? So we need someone that can buff attack. So let's go let's sort by support and then buff attack. And also evasion. So we can look through this. Right. So we can maybe go for Faulkner. Faulkner can buff crit and also buff attack and special attack. Pretty good. Right, so you can put Faulkner in. Or you can go for Hubert. Hubert is a really good support in this game. He can literally max out crit and attack in two turns. Very strong. So for example, let's just put Faulkner. Okay. Now, one other thing we need is an evasion buffer. Right, because we need to activate blind spot. Right, blind spot, the evasion thing. So we need to find someone that can buff evasion. So who can buff evasion? Misty can buff evasion, so we can put Misty in. And then she can also buff special defense, which can be useful as well. And yeah, we have another team. Then make sure you just put more T at the last one. And that's all. You have another team completed. It's not that hard. Once you play this game for a while, you kind of know, right? Like this general rule. So the general rule again, I'll repeat. Pick a damage leader. Fill in the gap of your damage leader. Like maybe if you want to buff evasion, the same pair uses evasion multiplier or something. You need to buff evasion, but he or she cannot buff his or her own evasion. You bring an evasion support. Next thing is look at the stats. Maybe sometimes let's say you lack a defense or special defense support. You can bring them. It also depends on the stage. If the stage uses a lot of special attack moves, you can bring a special defense buffer. Then the last thing you can consider is bringing like a terrain, weather or zone setter to increase the damage even further. Now let's talk about co-op. So co-op is unfortunately kind of dead in this game because there's only like real one co-op event which is the gear event, the three star gear event, which is limited. It doesn't last forever and it only occurs like once a month, once every two months or something. But there's still like some guides, right? Some tips for you to do your co-op. Let's say if I do a co-op on block stage, the EX challenge thing, you can actually create your own team. So you don't actually have to play with online people. So when you create your own team, you have to use 9 of your own sync pairs and you cannot overlap the sync pairs. So for example, if I already have Lily Lunala on the middle team, I cannot put Lily Lunala on the right team. And let's say if I want to change uh, Torchic, see, you can see like this X axis, right? It means that I cannot use the same sync pair. Now let me just go and do a co-op stage to demonstrate it. So co-op has like a mechanic, which is the unity gauge, right? So the way unity gauge works is that you, if three of your own sync pairs, right, your team, they do damage three in a row, three times in a row, you activate uh, the unity gauge, right? But then if you but then you only but then if it's only two in a row and then your opponent attacks, the chain will be disabled. As you can see, we already have the chain, the unity bonus. So every time you use a move, it will keep decreasing like this gauge thing, you can see, right? And once it goes down to zero, you use a unity move. Also one tip is that you can actually click the bottom right corner and then you can direct your uh, NPC or AI robot thing to attack. Let's say you want to attack left side. Right, they will attack the left side. So that's just a quick tip for you. And then we are at 5 now. Let's do another one. And then if you crit, you get like a bonus gauge, right? If it's 4 gauge, it usually... If it's 4 gauge, if you and then you crit, it becomes like 5 gauge. And then you reduce the gauge thing by 5. Well, it's probably a bit complicated when I explain it, but just play the game and you probably get it eventually. Not that difficult to understand this. And this is the Unity attack. And yeah, that's all. Thought there's not a lot of stuff going on for uh, co-op. Just know that all the co-ops can give you like gear stuff, right, to upgrade. So yeah, that is all for this guide. This video is so so long. It took me a long time to script this as well, making sure that I like, covered as much things as possible. So if you enjoy this or you find this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.